I read an article the other day that suggested that the production of a Game of Thrones spinoff in the HBO original miniseries turned series Big Little Lies is draining their budget. HBO is in the midst of learning a lesson that NFL teams learn every year. How to assess and bring in talent and how much to pay for it. Some teams continue to learn or I suppose not learn this lesson year after year, but I digress. Game of Thrones is, according to CheatSheet.com, the sixth most expensive show to produce, at approximately $6 million per episode. That's because they don't cut corners in the production of the series, often filming on location, around the world, and spending big on CGI to make the world as realistic as possible. The major motion picture standards to which the production team makes the series is part of the reason it's considered to be among the greatest TV series ever made. Hold that thought for a second. HBO is currently working on not one, but somewhere between three to five different Game of Thrones spin-off ideas. Of course, not all will make it to pilot, and of the pilots, likely only one will be greenlit as a series. However, with three to five currently in production, that means a significant amount of resources is being allocated to one section of HBO. Understandable. Game of Thrones has been amazing and unbelievably popular and a cash cow. You cannot afford to fuck up a possible spin-off. Enter the rest of the HBO original series lineup. High Maintenance, a series adapted from a web series that follows a nameless marijuana delivery man known as The Guy, played by one half of the formerly married duo that created the show. One star, and he's not really a star. But there doesn't really appear to be one. As of writing this, I've never watched the show, but it sounds intriguing. My point is, they probably aren't having to spend a whole lot to make this one. Next up, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. The most expensive thing on this show is John Oliver. Watch it, and you'll see why. Real Time with Bill Maher. Mar, whatever. Same general idea as last week with John O. Here and Now, a drama about a multiracial family living in modern day Portland. And their cast list has one or two kind of familiar names, but you have no idea where you know them from. And then apparently an ensemble of people from around the globe, like Costa Rican actor Daniel Zavato and Lebanese actor Peter MacDissi. Dissi. Yeah. I just watched the trailer for it, it doesn't look bad or expensive to make. Put a pin in this one too, we're gonna circle back around to it. Vice News, which is essentially HBO's news show. They presumably have a news budget that encompasses a single studio, travel fees, food, gear, etc. Not really a money pit. Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. Like a hybrid of Last Week Tonight, Real Time, and Vice News in format, similar budget as those af aforementioned shows. Upcoming series Barry, starring Bill Hader as an anonymous assassin who begins transitioning into becoming an actor. They have a couple of heavy hitters on the roster, but otherwise looks budget friendly for HBO. Silicon Valley, like a sitcom in its fourth season. Not very pricey to produce. Westworld, which honestly I believe doesn't even need an introduction. It's just so incredible. If you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend. Had a couple stars that likely will be gone, leaving room for the young and up and comers to take over. So, bu 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 budget friendly for HBO. Which brings me around to the point of this whole thing Big Little Lies. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a TV miniseries before, but usually they are over the top, sometimes to a fault. They usually star top tier at or A-list talent because it's a miniseries, so it's not expected to go for an extended period of time. Of course, not all miniseries follow that model exactly. My favorite example being NBC Universal's 2014 CBC and sci-fi miniseries, Ascension. 
which was an absolute incredible masterpiece that most definitely should have launched into a full series because of how it was all put together. A new show with a fresh cast blossoming to me is like when an NFL team acquires a wealth of talent via a successful draft or a shopping spree in free agency. The best are when it's new everything. Remember the Big Bang Theory when it was first starting up? They had a solid nucleus of talent, but it was all relatively unknown talent. Had them all signed to rookie contracts and they enjoyed a few seasons of solid success. However, at the end of those rookie deals, now the Big Bang Theory is the number one sh watched show in America. These guys and gals are household names, folks are wearing their catchphrases on t-shirts and shit, contract renewal time comes up. Now we're talking bigger numbers and more years. That's how shows come to become too expensive to continue. The top three on that list that I referenced earlier? From, a uh, what was it, CheatSheet.com? Former HBO smash hit, Rome. Had some great names leading that one, but like Game of Thrones, most of the budget was allocated towards costumes, set design, and trying to realistically capture life in ancient Rome. Tallying out to about nine million per episode. In front of that one, Friends. The largely popular sitcom that acted as a launch pad for some mighty names in Hollywood. Get this, $10 million per episode. You heard that right, $10 million. It's because just as I described with the Big Bang Theory, this cast of six really blew up. And then everyone wanted to be fairly compensated, so all got a mil per episode. Damn, no wonder they had to finally call it quits in 2004. And finally, ER, holding the lead at $13 million per episode, which was agreed upon by Warner Brothers in an effort to hang on to George Clooney, whom helped guide the series to record-breaking ratings and helped launch his own career elsewhere. It would later be referred to as the half-a-billion-dollar blunder, as it cost them over $440 million. ER still failed to raise ratings, and in 1999, Clooney left anyways. Don't worry, ER rebounded with lower budget, but moving on. Big Little Lies tells the story of three emotionally troubled women in Monterey, California, who become embroiled in a murder investigation. Alright, that's all fine and good. Got a drama based on a book. Here's the thing. The reason this should have just stayed as a miniseries instead of being picked up as a series is because of the cast. The three leads in this consequently bloated budget series are Nicole Kidman, Reese Witherspoon, and Shailene Woodley. These are all feature film actresses. I can only imagine what they cost per episode. So then the question becomes, HBO, if you have a Game of Thrones department that is costing you around $6 million per episode, and you also have multiple other crews, presumably working on the three to five spin-off ideas, by the way, they claimed in an unrelated article they are really going to bust the piggy bank open for this spin-off. Why would you green light a series from a miniseries with an all-star cast, knowing you've got money leaking everywhere? I just don't see the return on investment. I mean, if it were spearheaded by three relatively unknown actresses, then we wouldn't even be having this conversation. But then again, if that were true, then the only people to actually tune in for the miniseries would have been fans of the book. So, it's kind of a catch-22. They should have left it alone, though. Because if this affects the upcoming season of Game of Thrones, or the upcoming spinoff, then Game of Thrones fans may riot and burn this mother down. But only time will tell. Hey, thanks for tuning in for this. Until next time, like and subscribe so that you will be the first to know when I drop my next video about the Miami Dolphins this offseason and why I'm pissed off with them. See you next time.